Hi everyone, Tim the Plain Man here and welcome to Plain Time Cube Red Edition. So what we've got here, I've been sent by the team at Cube Pilot, and thank you to Philip and the team there, this pre-release version of the Cube Red Autopilot. And this is something really, really special. What have we got? H757 two H757s. One of those H757s has 256 megabytes of, of flash associated with it, and we've got Ethernet plus ADS-B. So this, this is something special. This is really something special. I got a funny feeling that QBread is going to be a standout product for QPilot, which is great, and for the RDPilot uh, community in general. So we all know that the H743, the STM H743 processor has been the top of the line, the premium version of uh, Ardu Pilot flight controllers for, for some time. Well, no longer, because now we have the H757 and the, H, the STM32 H757 is the brains behind this flight controller. And what I want to point out is Cube Pilot is the company that gives you the Cube Orange. Cube Orange is famously, along with some of the other Cube, uh, various different flavors, black and purple, etc., and gold even, um, but Cube Orange is you know, often found in some of the most uh, advanced um, professional Ardu Pilot drones, RPAS, UAS. Uh, it's again the, the premium product. It's the top end product. Cube and Cube Orange and Cube Pilot. The Australian company Cube Pilot is uh, is one of the leaders, and it, it's great to see. Well, this is going to be even more interesting. Let's open her up and have a look inside, shall we? This is a pre-release product. Look how beautifully packaged that is for a pre-release product. Well, let's open her up and see what we've got inside. What a beautiful, a beautiful little component we've got here. This is the Cube Red. And what a lovely, rich, burgundy red uh, aluminum case. Welcome to the world of open source and Oh, there's a Cube user manual here, and it refers to the Cube Pilot website, User Guides, Autopilot, the Cube user manual. Before we get into the details in there, let's have a look and see what we've got with the flight controller itself. So here we have the flight controller mounted on a carrier board, and there are hmm, a whole bunch of PWM outputs, uh, let's see how many, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Seems to be 15, what a funny number. Unless I miscounted, it is possible. Interestingly, in the Cube user manual, there isn't anything for the Cube Red itself, apart from this beautiful picture. Uh, and there is a good description of this carrier board, describing all the pins, all the pinouts, the connectors, and what they are. And so there's uh, one picture for this end of the, the board, a picture that show, describes the ethernet port, one that describes what this is, um, a, a separate picture for this end, and then another picture showing you what this end, what this, the side connectors are for, which is, um, you know, there's a second a, a CAN port on here, another telemetry port, etc. And this, I'm going to guarantee, is going to be your ADS-B antenna. Oh, here's a USB on the top, obviously. And here we've got a, a SD card slot with an SD card pre-installed. Very nice. So there we have, this is the Cube Red. And uh, what else do we get in the box? Let's just have a quick look at that. A bunch of cables, everything I'm going to need, a... What's this one going to be? There's going to be a power distribution board of some kind, I suppose. And look at this. Oh, an extra case. 
maybe that screws on top to cover yeah I think that will cover up these things if um, for additional protection yes that fits nicely on top here and what have we got we've got a mounting uh, a piece of double severe sponge double-sided foam so it's pretty simple straightforward some more foam some more foam some more foam lots of foam and this is our ethernet connection so oh, that's interesting so this this cable here has a RJ45 connection on the end and this cable seems like it would go in here yep there we go so there's your ethernet connection so uh, we'll see how that works PB01A23 it looks like power of some kind oh there we go power in power out and this will connect to the flight controller through the um, through one of the power boards very and look at that very very neat little assembly so let's take a look at some of the specs of what we'll see in the cube red first of all not only is this an h757 driven autopilot there are two h757 it has a primary and a secondary and somehow and we'll have to figure this out those two processes can cooperate and collaborate to uh, to control the vehicle the primary flight controller in here not only has two megabytes of flash memory but it has 256 megabytes of what's called qspi flash so extended flash maybe a little slower but my goodness the difference between two megabytes and 256 megabytes there absolutely have to be huge things that can be accomplished with a flight controller with 256 megabytes of qspi flash there's three can buses um, you may know that i'm a huge fan of can bus and drone can and i think it's a, a great thing that a lot of connections to peripherals in um, planes these days are switching from using UARTs to using CAN. I usually use uh, CAN-based GPS, CAN-based airspeed sensors, CAN-based compasses even, the um, uh, RM3100 for example. Uh, so there's three CAN buses, two of them are available to the primary and the third one is available to both the primary and secondary flight controller. This is the one that I really, really like, Ethernet. This flight controller has an Ethernet connection. It has an Ethernet port, we'll see it. I think it's gonna be 100 megabits per second Ethernet. These days I put a Raspberry Pi or some kind of companion computer into every vehicle, every plane that I build from my cheapest foamy uh, to the Painted Eagle that I'm building right now. Every one of them has a companion computer and right now, I've got to connect with the UART, not any, not any longer with this. I'll be able to plug in with Ethernet and with some of the, the amazing power that comes with that, including something simple, but long way past you, being able to download log files at a reasonable speed. Uh, I've heard that you might be able to get 80 megabits per second uh, log downloads, which is just... Um, you know streets ahead of anything you can do now. So that's wonderful. This has an ADSB receiver built into it um, which is uh, going to be fundamental here in Canada especially but well, I mean worldwide in general but in Canada uh, object detect and avoidance is going to be one of the critical components of future of you know our past beyond you know pure hobby flying in a little field and it's it's going to be quite important that the autopilot itself can detect planes helicopters uh, flying around because uh, we want to avoid them so ADS-B built in wonderful but lastly there's uh, three IMUs on the primary and another IMU on the secondary flight controller so that's it though that's all I know when I plugged in the cube red, there was nothing on it. There was no RD pilot. Mission planner tried to connect. There was nothing to connect to. So what I did was I went to 
setup, install firmware, and I chose load custom firmware. And then I picked CubeRed primary and loaded this APJ file, which I just built a few minutes ago from master. So it's the latest 5.0 dev build of master as at 3 p.m. on the 11th of January, 2024. And when I selected it, Mission Planner went looking and found a cube red that matched and installed Ardu Pilot. Now we have on COM24, Here we have it. Here we have Cube Red Primary. You can see that right there listed in the messages section. So we have Cube Red Primary um, dev build version and it's Autoplot playing 5.0 and everything is basically running. It's uh, Compass is calibrated, nothing set up, but it's there. And so we have the Cube Red Primary. So I know that there's two flight controllers on here. There's two STM32 H757. So how was I going to connect the other one? And I didn't really know because there's only one plug. Well, what I noticed was that there are actually two COM ports here that were appearing and disappearing when I unplugged this. So I went to COM13 and I did the same thing. But this time I chose the, so I went to setup and I chose the cube red secondary because I built there's a second a different version of Ardu Pilot that is built for a board called cube red secondary so I chose the cube red secondary APJ file I selected that and mission planner went looking and found a com port that matched the board ID and seemed to do something it programmed it so if I connect Now you see cube red secondary. So cube red secondary is, uh, is connected through the same serial port. I get two separate COM ports show up on mission planner and one of them is the primary and one of them is the secondary. And uh, you can run and, and in fact, to just to prove that, I, I checked the, uh, the sys ID, the Mavlink, this, map, this ID, this MAV. And that showed up as three, the default setting of three on the cube red secondary. Well, so if I disconnect from there, and now I go and look at 24. There we have this MAV ID is set to 30 because I went and set the red primary to 30 so that I would be able to differentiate it. So I'm actually connecting to two separate flight controllers here. Of course, the COM ports will be dynamic and you know whatever it shows up on in your machine will be different. But so the key here is that the two flight controllers show up as separate COM ports and out of the box, nothing's installed, but there is a bootloader and Mission Planner is capable to install the correct version of Ardu Pilot on, uh, on whichever board is required. So if you select to install primary, it'll choose the primary one. If you select to install secondary, it'll choose the secondary one. This CubeRed Ardu Pilot flight controller has a built-in ethernet connector. And that is oh, so, so, so important. These devices and the vehicles that they're going to go into, planes, drones, UAS, rovers, submarines, all of these kinds of things, they are going to be connected. And this is the beginning of this. What we have had in the past, you've got connected fridges and washing machines. What we're going to have is connected UAS. Might be scary to some people, but it's the internet of drones. 
This is what this is about. This is the ability to, of a flight controller to, to connect and communicate with a companion computer on the same uh, plane, uh, a digital camera to uh, a swarm of drones flying around together to the cloud with AI running on a local device and AI running on the cloud. This is the kind of thing that is gonna just accelerate the capabilities of UAS, RPAS, drones, uh, and it's going to be a lot of fun to see what happens with this. And yeah, you know what? I'm going to have some fun playing with it myself. Tim the Plane Man, over and out. Bye.